I'm uh, from Geneva. A little over four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this nation a new public school system conceived in local control and dedicated to the proposition that all students are entitled to a public education. Now we are engaged in a great civil argument, testing whether our state or any state so conceived and so dedicated can long endure free and strong. We are met here in a great forum to test those arguments. We have come here to petition our government and redress the grievances to teaching and learning that Common Core has accelerated. It is altogether fitting and proper that we do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot petition. We cannot redress. We cannot undo the harm that we've done to school children who have been casually cheated by men in blue suits ever since our abdication of the local control of teaching and learning. The sacrifices of those children and their parents who have endured our misguided reaction to the 1983 report, A Nation at Risk, will remain permanent testimony to our unforgivable failure since No Child Left Behind to petition, redress, and undo the harm of the test and punish educationists' reform agenda. The world may little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what we have done to New York's students and parents. It is for us, who work in public education, rather, to be dedicated here to the great task remaining before us, that from students we've cheated and parents we've lied to about testing rather than teaching, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave time and treasure. That we here highly resolve that those stakeholders shall not have sacrificed authentic learning in vain. That this state, guided by teachers and parents, shall return to the forgotten conditions of teaching and learning. And that public education of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not beyond next year's test result, refusals, be sacrificed on the altar of the Common Court. I'd like to thank you for the three minutes. My children have been living this nightmare for three years. This feels like deja vu. I've been speaking about the issues with Common Core for years now to no avail. Yet here I am, again speaking to a so-called listening session with an appointed task force. What will really change? A new name? Slightly less testing? There is no way to fix this. Common Core is copyrighted. The only solution is full repeal of Common Core. We need to end it. New York State's previous standards were superior to Common Core, and our state was in the process of developing new, better standards prior to Race to the Top. Those lost standards are what the children of New York deserve. That's why I'm here. That's why I diligently fight day after day, year after year. For the children of New York. For the future. Childhood happens only once in a lifetime. Our kids can't get a do-over. If this social experiment fails, what will happen? What will become of this generation? Will they be known as the lost generation? The victims of Common Core? My own children are attending the very school I graduated from, yet I can't say they are receiving the solid quality education I was fortunate to have. My teachers had the freedom and flexibility to teach us how to think, not what to think. Lessons were developmentally appropriate, yet challenging. I graduated with honors, went on to college, and am a successful business owner and private teacher today. I wouldn't be where I am today without the great teachers and programs at my public school. Do the children of today not deserve at least the same opportunities to learn and grow that we all had? 
Shouldn't our highly qualified teachers have the flexibility to develop young minds and help our impressionable students reach their full potential without the constant pressure of meeting each standard at the appropriate time and without having to teach to the test? I want students to be taught in a way that allows them to be successful in life, not just on a meaningless test and not just so they can be hired as an employee. I want all children to have an education experience that allows them to reach beyond tests and just getting any job. I want them to be given the tools necessary to develop lifelong skills to go above and beyond a minimum standard. I want them to grow, to learn, to dream, to achieve without limitations. If you are truly listening and making decisions based not on data points and budgets, but on morals and ethics, you will make a difference in an entire generation of children by ending Common Core and giving them the superior education they deserve. Thank you. I'm John Sheffield. I'm here tonight as a parent and a citizen, but I'm also an educator of 25 plus years. Never in that 25 years have I witnessed educators or the veterans districts threaten not to tell the truth to parents and communities until now. First, I'd like to address some more high-profile task members that aren't here this evening. Mr. Parsons, I failed to see how being in the Providence Equity Partners Group and being the former chairman of the board for Citigroup Bank qualifies him to discuss public education, let alone chair this task force. Furthermore, I believe there is a direct conflict of interest. Regarding Ms. Weingart, she has stated that Common Core was pushed out too fast, yet in Albany on June 8, 2013, she was clearly the one doing the pushing in the presence of over 10,000 witnesses. Her public teaching school's experience is minimal. Lastly, she lost credibility as soon as she took money from Gates. A little bit too much about hypocrisy. To Ms. Elia, in the John King forums, online, in emails, letters, and calls to the regents, the governor, NYSED, and the legislators that numbered in the thousands upon thousands, the public made it clear it was not for private money in public education. It was not for high stakes testing. It was not for Common Core. This message was made clear on multiple occasions, including the last budget process. And the people, people like this were totally ignored. Even the two of you, to the best of my knowledge, have never taught in a public classroom, nor have the proper background to do so. So now we are to believe that this group, unlike its predecessor, is going to really listen. Quite honestly, the very fact that you were appointed by Governor Cuomo detracts from any credibility you may have had, and I hope that's wrong. But just in case, here's a reminder of some of the general common core issues that I have listened to. Little or no support of research, unsupported claims of college and career readiness, using manipulated data that does not compare apples to apples to claim we are falling behind on international tests, ignoring poverty rates completely. A false claim that the standards were internationally benchmarked. In New York State, a growth formula that has been proven to be invalid and unreliable, yet Governor Cuomo, in collusion with his big money donors, along with many regents and legislators, have purposely place our children's education and public education in jeopardy by choosing to use such a severely flawed statistic. The governmental use of threats and extortion in the form of no child left behind waivers and funding. Common Core was thrown together with little or no educator input by many people with almost zero background in education and childhood development, never piloted, never scrutinized by accepted practices and procedures, and thrust upon our nation's children in some grand experiment. All that being said, perhaps you can at least be honest enough to say to the parents, it is their right to refuse the New York State assessments, period, and do so without threatening them or their schools. <laughs> Lastly, the Common Core was so good as its proponents claim, it should have sold itself without threats, coercion, private investors, and certainly not needed task force. <laughs> this is not about poor implementation, it's a bad for our nation, and for the Lord, period. And feel it, and everything associated. 